What's up, everybody? In this video, we're going to cover Yusuko's 2022 Open Contest at the Bronze Level. Problem number one, photo shoot. Farmer John, desperate to win the award for best cow photographer at the county fair, is trying to take the perfect photograph of his cows, uh, N cows, where N is between two and two times 10 to the fifth. Uh, and it has to be even, it uh, looks like. Farmer John owns cows of two potential be breeds, Guernseys and Holsteins. To make his photo as aesthetic as possible, he wants to line up his cows so that as many Guernseys are in even numbered positions in the line as possible. The first position in the line is an odd position, the next is an even position and so on. Okay, so his ideal photograph should be like H, G, H, G, H, G. Um, we wanna try and maximize the number of Guernseys that are in even positions. Um, potentially if we had like G, G as well, that still is maximized because we can't get this guy necessarily into an even number position because all our even positions are currently already occupied by Guernseys. Um, due to his lack of strong communication with his cows, the only way he can achieve his goal is by asking even length prefixes of his cows to reverse themselves. A prefix consists of, uh, of the range of cows from the first cow up to the jth cow for some position J, an even length prefix. Uh, let's, let's run over that because I've, I've seen some confusion about the way this is phrased. So what they're saying is he's going to start here, Farmer John's going to start from the beginning and select an even length of cows. So either two cows or four cows or six cows or eight cows. And then what he's going to do is he's going to take that prefix. So for example, if it was four cows and he's going to like rotate it. Um, so in this case, if this was to rotate, then the G would go around into position one. The H would go to position four. This H goes to where the G used to be, and this G goes to where the H used to be. The result then would be that this string is perfectly reversed. So it would go G, H, G, H, um, like so, G, H, G, H. Um, so that would be selecting this as a prefix to rotate. Um, he can select any prefix he wants, but he can't do anything from the middle arbitrarily. Um, and also when he rotates, he has to do an even number of cows. So either two or four or six or eight and so forth. Please count the minimum number of reversals required for Farmer John to achieve his goal. Okay, so this is another one of those problems that we're going to solve by not actually solving it. Um, what they're asking for is not what the actual steps are, but the minimum number of steps. And most of the time when these problems are asking you for the minimum number of steps, we don't actually have to simulate the rotations and simulate the process. There's going to be some way we can analyze the initial input in order to figure out how much work it's going to take without actually having to do the work. Um, okay, input format comes from the terminal uh, or standard in, so it's just typed into the console. The first line of input contains the value of n. This is just the length of the string. Um, most likely you aren't going to need to know that number, um, honestly, because if you're using Python, uh, you're just going to do next line. Uh, Java, probably same thing. You're just going to use next line. Um, C++, you probably will just see into a string. Um, uh, the second line contains a string of length n, specifying the initial ordering of the cows from left to right. Okay. Uh, each H represents a Holstein while each G represents a Guernsey. The output format printed to standard output is the minimum number of reversals needed on a single line. Um, and it's in order to try and maximize. We're trying to maximize um, how many there are in the even position. Um, so in, essentially what, what, what we can realize from this is in any situation, what, when they're saying maximize, if I have a G and an H, there is absolutely a way to reverse this and make it into an HG. The final solution will have every single HG pair uh, listed in the order where G is in the even position. The reason why they're saying maximize is because there's gonna be situations where we have GG and we can't get both of those into the into even number positions. Um, and the reason why is everything has to move as pairs, uh, move as pairs. So if we look at this problem, let's start trying to actually break down some of our situations here. Um, if I have a pair that goes from GH, no matter where that is in the line, if I do a reversal that includes it, the end result of the GH is gonna be that it's gonna become HG. Um, and it doesn't matter where in the string it is because the reversal will always, will always flip them. Uh, second thing to observe, if I have two letters that are exactly the same side by side, there's nothing I can do to improve the way that they, uh, they are laid out. Um, reversing GG won't make any more or less, reversing HH won't make any more or less. Um, so we really have three states uh, for any given pair. For any given pair, if we write them all out, I've got GG, I've got HH, um, I've got HG, and I've got GH. Now, remembering that I want to have, um, it was Guernsey's and even prefixes, right? Yep, check that. 
Um, as many Guernseys are in even number positions, and then we start with position one, right? So um, essentially, if I've got an HG, that's a Guernsey in an even number position. As long as we're doing all pairs, then every first letter will be an odd position. Every second letter will be an even position. So this is what we want. I'm gonna re represent that as a true. This right here, GH, this could be improved if it was flipped. Right now, it is not in the state where it is optimized and we need to optimize it. So I'm gonna represent this as false. And then for both of these, since these are completely irrelevant, I'm gonna represent these as a dot. So taking my initial string, uh, I'm going to write that out. We're going to do GG. Um, and I'm going to write these kind of as pairs because they really will always stay as pairs since we have to flip even number prefixes. GG, GH, uh, GH. Uh, let me see. GH, GH. Uh, GG, GH, GH. HG. Uh, HH. HG, HG. HG. Ran out of room there. HG. Okay. So for each one of these, I'm going to represent them using that encoding. GG can't be improved upon. I'm going to represent with a dot. GH, this is not in its optimized position, so that's a false. GH also is not optimized. That's a false. HG is optimized. That's a true. HH is op uh, is, uh, can't be improved upon. That's a dot. HG is already optimized. That's a true. And then HG is already optimized. That's a true. OK. So what we need to do here is we need to try and find a way to eliminate noise. Uh, I'm gonna uh, move this over to a blank here. So remembering anytime I flip a substring or a subsequence or whatever, um, all of my falses are gonna change to trues, all of my trues are gonna change to falses and all of my dots are gonna stay dots. So let's, let's kind of rewrite this and think about how we, can, how we can simplify this. So I got dot f f t dot t. T. And again, this represents the original string. The dot is the GG, which cannot be improved upon. The false is a GH because this is not in an optimized position and so forth. So I'm not going to use the Gs and the Hs anymore. I'm just going to refer to the trues and falses. Now, a couple of things to think about. If I have a sequence of something, um, let's say, uh, uh, let, me, let, let me just write only trues and falses. Let's back burner this for a moment. Let's say like I only have trues and falses to deal with. False, true, true, false, true. False, false, false. Okay, so the first thing, and, and you, you may have seen some puzzles, um, some sliding puzzles that, that work like this. There's actually, um, there's a, a plastic game puzzle called like Switchback or something like that, that has a bunch of numbers that go around in a circle and you can flip the middle. Um, but th this is this sort of problem is, is interesting because we're gonna be able to flip a sequence here. When we flip this sequence, all of these are gonna reverse. So that's the first observation to make. The next observation to make is that I can flip anything starting from the beginning and I can always flip things as groups. So for example, if I wanna make um, these trues, when I flip these trues, since I want everything to be the same, I can treat these two trues as one single unit. There's not gonna ever be a reason where I'm gonna wanna flip like this part and break up a pair of trues because ultimately I wanna get them all to be true. If I wanna get them all to be true, ultimately what I need to do is get them all to be the same. Um, so if you were to start thinking about that, if I were to flip just this first one by itself, I would have true, true, true. Now I'm going to flip all of these trues together. So the next thing I want to do is I want to try and get it to be the same as whatever's next, in this case, false. Um, if I were to flip um, all the way from, let me rewrite this. If I have true, 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 and because I've just flipped that first one, false, true, false, false, false. If I flip all the way to the false here, then these trues are gonna become falses and the false is gonna become true and I'd be left with true, false, 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 true. Now that didn't get me any closer to having them all the same. But if I were to flip these initial trues, just the three trues into falses, then I would have false, 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 true, false, false, false. So now I've got four here that are the same. Um, I then can flip all four of those together and turn them in all into trues. True, 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 true. Um, and now I've got five of them together. <clears throat> I then can flip all of these and make those all into uh, falses. <clears throat> false, 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 false. Now I've got them all the same, but I want them all to be true. So I'm gonna flip the entire line and I'm gonna flip these three together as, as a single block. I'm basically gonna treat these like one. So for the ones where they alternated, I had to do a flip each time to get the sequence to match the next one. But when I hit a block of them, I can treat that like a single thing. 
So let's back up and actually solve this original problem. And then we'll talk about how we're gonna optimize finding the solution. So taking this initial problem, when I do my flips um, for the dots, the dots are not gonna change no matter where I flip them. So essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to move forward and get these all to be the same. So if I were to look at my falses here, I have false, false, dot, false, false, and then a true. In order to get these the same, I'm gonna flip this sequence first. So it's gonna become true, true, dot, true, dot, true, true. And actually that's already solved. That was a pretty simple case. Um, but what did we observe about that? Let's look at some observations. First of all, if I have two that are the same, I should always treat them like one single unit because I need them to be the same and I need them to stay the same. So there's no reason to treat them as separate. Second thing is the position of the dots doesn't matter at all. Um, so taking this initial string, what I can do is I can remove the dots entirely. They can be fully ignored and it doesn't affect the solution. False, false, true, true, true. The second thing is anytime I have a contiguous block, I can treat them like a single thing as well because I'm going to move them like a single thing and they're gonna be solved like a single thing, which means essentially I've got false and true. Um, the final observation is that if the ending is true, I will never have to flip it. So I can fully drop it off. Um, until I have a false at the end. Um, uh, and I can also, since I dropped the dots, I, I would basically be dropping trues and dots off the end until I get a false at the end. What I'm left with is just a false. And in order to fix that, that's just one maneuver because I can fix that as a false. So if I were to flip that, then that's true. That's one step to finish, uh, which is the answer. Um, one, we're gonna try a, a couple more complicated strings though to show that this still does work though. So let's do, um, I'm just gonna do something at random here. We're gonna try and do, uh, I'm gonna try and generate, uh, I'll reverse generate the sequence. I wanna have something that goes false, true, true, false, false. And I wanna put a dot in here and a dot in here. That's my, my goal to create. So for false, that's gonna be GH. For dot, I can do HH. For true, I could do HG. True is HG, uh, false would be GH. Uh, for dot, I could do GG or HH. So let's do GG this time and then GH again. Um, so this is just to, to kind of work backwards. But if my initial string was GH, H, H, G, G, blah, 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 then I would have false dot, true, true, false dot, false. Okay, so applying these rules. Um, uh, let's actually have it end on a, end on a sequence of trues. Um, H, G, H, G, H, G. That would become true. I like that, that true sequence at the end. Okay, so solving this the slow way, um, I'm gonna flip this false, first of all, to make it true, dot, true, true, and then it would still be false, dot, false, true, true, true. That would be my first flip. My second flip would be to reverse these trues so they match the false. Um, that's gonna be uh, false, false, dot, false, and then false, dot, false, true, true, true. Uh, my third step would be to reverse this entire sequence right here. Um, and that would make those all trues. So we'd have true, that's false is gonna rotate over to there. The dot's gonna rotate over next. So I'd have false dot, or true dot, true, true, dot, true, true. And then the final trues on the end, true, true, true. At which point it's solved after three moves. So let's see if that optimization thing is, is holds up and we get the same answer. We should get three. So backing it back up. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Racing. Okay, good. All right. So first rule I said is we can fully ignore the dots. So I'm left with false, true, true, false, false, true, true, true. Second is anything that's the same in a row, we're going to treat as a single thing. So false, true, false, true. And if you think about that, what that guarantees is that these are always going to be alternating. Um, if we always group things that are the same, then any sequence of falses becomes one false until it becomes a true. Any sequence of trues becomes a single true. Any sequence of falses becomes a single false. Any sequence of trues becomes a single true. Um, so now I've got false, true, false, true. This last piece right here, uh, true, true, true. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, wait, I already condensed that, my bad. Um, okay, so these three trues became that true. Falses became that false. Those two trues became that true. And that false is still that false. Um, trues on the end will never have to be flipped, which means I can drop that true on the end. I don't have to think about it. I've got false, true, false. Now, this is the problem I have to solve. In order to solve this problem, I have to get them all the same, but they're always alternating. So they're always alternating and they're always ending in a false. Um, so I'm going to flip this first one, which is going to make it true, true, false. I'm going to flip the two trues to make it false, false, false. And then I'm going to flip the false, false, false to make it true, 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 true. That's three flips. This false being flipped 
corresponded to flipping this false right here. The pair of trues being flipped corresponded to flipping these three, which would have all been true at that point. Um, then the third flip of this false, false, false corresponded to, to flipping this sequence up to the false. And then remember the trues didn't have to be flipped. So that's essentially what we're doing here. We want to uh, get our initial string, turn it into the sequence of trues and falses, merge them by dropping the dots, getting rid of the ending T, if there is one, because we won't have to switch it. Um, in any sequences where it's multiple of the same, we get together. Now, a little bit of observation and a little fiddling um, of this false, true, false, since these are alternating sequences. Let's look at some alternating sequences. If I have an alternating sequence of false, true, false, true, versus if I have an alternating sequence of true, false, true, false. Um, so remembering, if I have a true at the end here, I get to drop that. So that would give me false, true, false. Trues at the beginning cannot be dropped. Um, so this is still true, false, true, false on the right side. These are two separate problems. For this one, I would flip the false, giving me true, true, false. I would then flip the pair of trues, giving me false, false, false. Finally flipping these, and this is the one we just did, giving me true, true, true. For this one, um, I'm gonna flip the initial true, which is gonna give me false, false, true, false. Then I'm gonna flip these two, which is gonna give me true, 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 false. I'm gonna flip these three, giving me false, 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 false. And finally, I'm gonna flip all four of them, giving me true, 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 true. Now, you might have noticed uh, that once you drop the T and you're left with the fully simplified string, the length of this string, whatever the length of your final string is, is the number of operations it takes in order to fix it. The reason why is because every operation really is only fixing one thing. Um, if we refer to things as being fixed in this case, the T had to be fixed so that it would match the false. That sequence had to be fixed so it would match the true. And then that sequence had to be fixed so it would match the false. And then the whole entire sequence had to be fixed so they would all be true. So that was one, two, three, four operations. One for the sake of the T, one for the sake of the F, one for the sake of the T, one for the sake of the F. Same rule happened here. I had to flip the false so it would match the true. Then I had to flip them both so they would match the false. And then I had to flip, uh, flip the sequence of falses so they would all become true. Once for the sake of that false, once for the sake of this true, once for the sake of that false. So what you're gonna do, uh, and again, your data structure is kind of up to you. What you're gonna do though, is you're gonna read these in. Uh, I would take them as pairs um, and convert them immediately. Anytime you have two of the same, that could just be completely ignored. I represented those as dots, but we don't even have to store those. If you have some sort of a vector or a list, just don't append the pairs at all. When you hit a GH, you append that as a false. When you hit an, a, a GH here, you append that as a false. Uh, you can always check the ending of the list. And if you see something that's already on the list, you can just neglect to append it. So I can append them and I can merge them or I can just prevent appending them in the first place. So when I hit that HG, if this is like my list, um, then I have GG, I ignore it. I have GH, I check my list. Last thing my list, my list was empty. So that becomes the first thing on my list. I hit the next GH, that GH is also false. Since the end of the list is already false, I don't append it. Um, HG uh, would be a true. True is different than what's on the end of the list. So I'm gonna append the true to the list, false true. Uh, HH is the same, so I'm going to ignore it. Uh, HG, uh, once again is true, matches the end of the list. Um, and once again, HG is true, matches the end of the list. Once I get done here, um, I get the length of the list, in this case, two items. And then if the last item is a true, I can subtract one, giving me one item. And that will tell me that that's one operation. Um, and that, that'll work for any sequence of, of Gs and Hs, um, as long as you avoid appending duplicates. And then as long as when you get to the end, you remember that the, the last one, you don't have to do any operations for the last item. If it's already true, then it could just be completely ignored. So we can subtract one. Um, and uh, that's the algorithm. So uh, good luck coding it. I'll talk to you in the next video.